Next up, we have Abigail Quant. Abigail received one of her first bookbinding lessons from Chris Clarkson in 1976. She later went on to earn a master's in science and diploma in conservation from the Winterthur University of Delaware Art Conservation Project program, sorry, in 1982 with a specialization in rare book conservation. From 1982 to 1984, she was an advanced intern under Anthony Keynes at Trinity College Library, Dublin, and spent one month studying with the English bookbinder and conservator, Roger Powell. In 1984, she began working at the Walters Art Museum as a visiting manuscripts conservator and joined the staff in 1989. A specialist in the conservation of illuminated manuscripts on parchment, Ms. Quant has been head of book and paper conservation at the Walters since 2001. She has taught a five-day course on par parchment conservation for book and paper conservators and leads workshops for students in the American graduate programs. She was the co-compiler of a chapter on parchment for the AIC paper conservation catalog, which was published in 1994 and reformatted as a wiki in 2007. Ms. Quant was the principal conservator for the Archimedes Palimpsest project from 1999 to 2012, and also supervised the treatment and rebinding of the Syriac Galen Palimpsest for a similar multispectral imaging and transcription project based at the Walters. She contributed to the vol volume with a piece on Chris Clarkson and his contributions to the study, care, and conservation of manuscripts at the Rare Books and Rare Books at the Walters Art Museum. Abigail. Uh, Abigail, you're muted. Thank you. Start over. Um, so I just wanted to begin with uh, a brief introduction to the uh, Walters Art Museum, which was originally called the Walters Art Gallery. Um, the collection was formed by um, a father and son, uh, William Walters and his son, Henry Walters, in the uh, late 19th century um, into the early 20th. And these are views of the, um, uh, the Palazzo building, which was constructed um, in historic uh, area of Baltimore in uh, the state of Maryland in the US. And the um, Palazzo building was modeled after a Renaissance Palazzo in Italy. Um, so the, the collection is uh, very encyclopedic. Um, it's often compared to that of the Metropolitan Museum of, of New York, but on a much smaller scale. But what is, um, what is somewhat unique about the Walters um, is the collection of manuscripts um, and rare books that was amassed by um, the son, Henry Walters, who was a bibliophile. And here's just a, a selection of images um, <clears throat> of the um, items in our collection. Um, Currently, we uh, hold almost 1,000 manuscripts, uh, the majority of which are um, illuminated. Um, we have about um, 1,290 um, incunabula and uh, about a similar number of printed books um, after 1500. Um, so Henry Walters was very interested in all types of books and he also collected fine bindings made by French binders um, of the uh, early 20th century. Um, Dr. Lillian Randall was hired by the museum in 1974 to be the curator of manuscripts. And um, the um, museum added um, a large um, extension to the 1904 building, uh, which enabled the curators to um, better display the collections. And um, in uh, about 1976, um, she was in touch with Chris Clarkson, who at the time was working at the Library of Congress, um, about the possibility of um, uh, being at the in some capacity. Um, 
Lillian Randall recognized um, that Chris was uh, a very accomplished conservator, but also um, really appreciated the collection at the Walters and knew a lot, especially about medieval manuscripts and bindings. And so um, together they worked out a plan for Chris to be hired um, under a grant, which was received from the National Endowment for the Humanities. Um, and he joined the staff in uh, February of 1977. Um, and uh, what was very fortuitous is that Chris already knew uh, about the Walters collection, had known about it since he was uh, a young art student in London at Camberwell, um, and was particularly enamored of the um, uh, medieval art at the Walters. And here are just a few examples. Um, and uh, so he already knew um, that this was a place that he uh, would love to work. Um, and uh, uh, was very enthusiastic about working with the uh, with the book collection. So, um, as as other people have already said, Chris was exceedingly ambitious and very had very high standards, and um, had lots of projects in mind um, when he began at the Walters. Um, and he had hoped, for example, to treat many of the um, iconic. Uh, medieval manuscripts in the collections um, to preserve them for the future, to study the bindings, to rehouse the manuscripts, um, to do research with our um, painting conservators on uh, particular topics. Um, some of these he was able to accomplish, some not, um, because he only stayed for two years. Um, but here are some early photographs of Chris on the left um, studying one of our um, books of hours in the collection. Um, and uh, he um, conducted a condition survey of 588 of the manuscripts, the Western manuscripts, writing detailed descriptions um, of all aspects, um, essentially doing codicological work. Um, and then he also um, engaged the services of two colleagues, Guy Petherbridge, and John Chalmers, who are seen in the right-hand slide. Guy is the one on, on the left who is looking, he's a specialist in Byzantine bindings and was looking at a Byzantine manuscript there. And John Chalmers um, is actually a specialist in later bindings. So, um, so they all um, worked together um, and actually um, did uh, tracings, did rubbings. They also were able to do some um, x-rays of some of the bindings um, to further understand the structures. Um, and one of the um, manuscripts that Chris uh, was just totally fascinated with um, from our collection is called the Monsi Gospels. Um, it's a German manuscript from the 11th century that's still in its original treasure binding. And as you can hopefully see on the left, um, uh, it was originally a tab binding. Unfortunately, the tail tab was cut off probably by a librarian um, long before it entered the Walters collection, but the, um, the tab end band at the head is still intact. But it's an incredibly uh, elaborate um, binding on heavy, thick wooden boards um, covered with um, silver, uh, ivories, niello bosses, and uh, a rock crystal in the center under which is a depiction of the crucified Christ. And Chris spent many, many hours um, examining this binding and writing um, lengthy notes in his beautiful italic hand and um, creating drawings, reconstructing the um, sewing of the tab and bands. Here is the tail band, which as you can see is quite damaged. Um, because of course it was cut off. Um, sorry, these drawings are a bit faint, but hopefully you can see how precise he was um, in recording these features. Um, and this is the intact um, head uh, tab, um, which of course extends above the, um, uh, the double core um, red silk um, end band and uh, is woven with um, silver wire. Um, and um, Chris published um, some of his observations about this um, binding 
in an article um, that was really focused on the Byzantine silk that had been used to cover the spine um, of the, uh, the binding. So, um, so in addition to studying the manuscripts um, and their bindings, um, Chris, of course, was um, really adamant that the books at the Walters be displayed properly. And as you all know, um, um, he, uh, from his uh, years at the Library of Congress um, was already training um, um, conservators and technicians and how to make book supports. And so here are some um, photographs of Chris um, demonstrating the construction of a card cradle from, from one of our books. Um, and uh, one thing I didn't realize at the time I wrote this article was that Chris was the one who introduced the use of plexiglass for cradles. Um, in 1973, while he was at the Library of Congress. And so he taught the Walter staff how to make plexiglass cradles. And then they made a large number for an exhibition that was held in New York at the Grolier Club um, in 1977-78. Um, Chris also desperately um, wanted to get some of the manuscripts rehoused, he didn't have the time to do the work. So Linda Blazer, who was a former trainee of his from the Library of Congress was hired under a different grant. And she constructed some very elaborate boxes, which in retrospect, I think don't actually work very well. Um, but he called these a two handed box because you needed two hands um, to open them, but they were meant for books with very fragile bindings. One of the biggest um, contributions that Chris made to um, the preservation of the Walters manuscripts was um, um, had to do with the uh, a treatment protocol that had been already in practice for some years at the Walters. Um, the conservators were using a material called soluble nylon to stabilize flaking paint in the manuscripts. And um, here on the right, this is a photomicrograph, unfortunately, of the soluble nylon, which is very visible. Um, um, and it didn't really flow very well. I mean, they were using it very precisely working under a microscope, but, um, but it's quite viscous. And uh, so he was very much against this idea. Um, I mean, it was common at the time. In fact, even Roger Powell used soluble nylon. Um, uh, but Chris felt that there were better materials. And so he encouraged the conservators to switch to using parchment size. And so they did. Um, and, um, and I think the manuscripts are definitely a lot better off for it. Um, and so he sourced the parchment from his uh, supplier in Rome um, and taught them how to, um, to use it and got special brushes made from Windsor and Newton. These are just a couple of uh, examples of Chris's detailed notes on the uh, bindings. Um, and uh, we're hoping at some point to scan these and make them available, but certainly the originals are available for study in the rare book room. Um, but what we have been able to do for the last 10 years is we've been digitizing our manuscripts and putting them up on a dedicated website called Walters Ex Libris. Um, and so um, some of the uh, catalog information, um, which uh, Chris helped to capture about the uh, manuscripts and their bindings is available on this website. So for example, Lillian Randall, the former curator at the Walters, who also contributed to the Festriff volume and wrote about this um, English Romanesque manuscript in our collection, the images of the entire manuscript are available on this <clears throat> website. You'll see the link there in the lower left, um, along with um, some of the, the description of the binding that was written by Chris. Thank you very much. Thank you, Abigail.